Good morning. Okay. Hi. Hi. Happy Monday. I'm a little bit later than I wanted to be today, but it's just, you know, it's Monday. I, I often wonder why I chose Monday for these, because here we are, past lunch. Anyhow, hello. I'm on the porch. I'm trying something very fancy and new that maybe you've heard of, and it is called a microphone. Because I did pay attention to your comments from the porch, and you're like, hey, we love being with you on your porch, except it's too bad we can't hear you. It's too bad about that. So I'm trying a microphone, and it's very high tech, and I want everybody to just get real excited about how we're leveling up out here, okay? Um, okay, I've got several things I want to talk to you about this morning. Here's the first thing. So, let's see, 10 years ago, um, when we first went to Ethiopia to um, meet Ben and Remy, we kind of walk into this gathering of a bunch of traveling parents and immediately, it's like a whole bunch of people and everyone's overwhelmed and it's a deal, it's a situation, and right away, like on the spot, I made instant and immediate and a long-term friendship with my friends, um, Ed and Susan. And so Ed and Susan Wanderer are some of the most incredible people. And on that trip, them and us, we were the only ones who were meeting older kids. So we were the older kid parents. Um, Ed and Susan adopted a sibling set of three kids, the most beautiful, profoundly wonderful children you have ever seen. And um, I, if I recall right, and Susan, tell me if I've got this wrong, there was a bit of, there was some melting down, there were some things, and I believe that I helped save a little bit of a moment with Susan by offering fingernail polish. Look, fingernail polish is a tool, and it counts. Okay, now I want to tell you something that Ed and Susan have started, and it's recent, and it is so awesome. This is just for no other reason that these are my friends, and I love them, and I am obsessed with what they are creating right now. This is no hint of a lie. Me and Susan's text thread is just endless and constant. So this is just because I am so excited to tell you. They have started essentially a walking club, and it's called Wander On, as in their last name. W-A-N-D-E-R, Wanderer, Wander On. And it started with this, a joke. It honestly started with a joke. And then it became this thing where people are like, wait, I wanna, can I do this with you? And it is like a walking club in which you can, well, how they say it. You can walk, you can run, you can skip, you can twirl. Your goal can be one mile a week your goal can be one mile an hour. Everybody gets to come in. And it is growing, and it is growing, and it is growing, and it's full of joy, it's full of life. You, the front door is however you are and wherever you are. Whatever your goals are, just to get moving. So they're in the middle of a week right now um, called the Totally Rad Wonder Week. I meant to tell you this in advance. There's only like two days left of it. But like in their little community, they're doing a Wonder Week it's all 80s themed. And so, like, Susan sent me this, too, so I could see. Because I'm like, this is me calling her the last two months. I'm like, how else can we build this? What can we do? What can you have to go with it? What can you, what can you send your community members? You know, I'm, I'm building a business for her. Um, so she's, she, you get, like, a playlist. And all the, your little, your little, what do you call this, race number. And, of course, because they're fun. You get your 80s sunglasses. You get your Michael Jackson Duran Duran pins that you get to wear. It's so cute. And if, if there is anything in you, anything at all, that's like, I, I just want to start. All I want to do is do some steps. That's it. I, I haven't exercised in a year. I haven't exercised in a decade. I'm overwhelmed by what, my, what I need to accomplish, how far I have to go. <coughs> this is your community. Everybody's in the pool, and Susan and Ed have such an amazing story, too, and I'm not going to spill her story, but she has already, this is just since December, 
just dropped. She's just dropped and she's just walking. Oh, walking around the block. Really ordinary, modest goals, but doing it every day. So I want you, if this, if you're interested at all, so <clears throat> they're on Facebook, it's called Wander On, W-A-N-D-E-R. On Instagram, their handle is Let's Wander On, L-E-T-S, Let's Wander On. And then you can get all the information and kind of find the front door to their community at letswanderon.com. So I'm so so happy i'm so proud of you susan and ed and so exciting 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 to watch um so this is the kind of walking community for all of us normals okay the ones who are just like i'm gonna start somewhere and with these teeny little modest goals and have this community of people who want to rally with me these are your folks i could not possibly say enough about ed and susan so I'm just telling you, you will love them, so go follow them on all the places. Okay, let me put this aside. My wander on water bottle. Okay, here's the next thing I wanna to talk to you about. Okay. Um, I wanna to say to you that if um, if things in your household, um, in your life, as a parent, um, as a partner, are wildly hard, <laughs> if you are experiencing ex struggle, and if you or your kids or all of you together or your, your spouse or partner are hurting, if you are in crisis, if you are managing so much stuff that nobody else sees and you feel alone, I want you to know something. I am so right there with you. First of all, you are not alone by any stretch of the imagination. I swear at like, you see me like in for the parts that I want to show you, right? So I pick what I want to say, I pick what I want to share, and obviously we all have a right to our own privacy. There's, I've said this before, but there's a marked difference between secrecy, um, which is often sort of marked by shame, and privacy, which is marked by discretion. And every one of us has a right to privacy. Um, every one of us should exercise discretion when it comes to what we share and to whom and how we share it, especially when it involves other people um, that we live with. Or So what I just want to say to you right now is I've got private things in my life, but y'all, <laughs> you're not the only one in the weeds, okay? You are not alone. And whatever thing you're navigating right now, I can just swear and promise you, there are so many of us out here going through the identical things, the same choices, the same losses, the same like absolute conundrums on how to get through. So I wanted to read you something out of this terrible book that I keep referencing. Ugh, codependent no more. Ugh, gosh, anyway. I recently discovered that I was codependent. I, that is not something I ever knew because I didn't understand the concept. Um, I just applied whatever I understood about the word codependent onto that and I was wrong. I thought codependency looked like um, neediness. Um, I thought it looked like weakness, um, uh, a lack of independence, a lack of um, sort of agency or resolve. Um, but that's not what codependency is at all. Codependency, as I've mentioned a couple of times, because, well, I've highlighted apparently this entire book, is more about control. And it is about trying to control somebody else's behavior, trying to manage somebody else's outcomes, trying to work your way into somebody else's choices and decisions and consequences. And, and believing in some wild magical way that you are you can control it that you can solve somebody else's behavior or that you're responsible for somebody else's health or wholeness um, or responsibility i mean it's a real gauntlet i'll tell you that and 
once I understood codependency for what it was, and then I could look backwards in the rearview mirror at how I have essentially operated out of that system, I guess forever, it's been a like real painful awareness and it's deeply affected, I'm just learning right now. You know how Carissa tells me, my, my counselor, you just are learning this right now. You're just now learning it. You're just now putting this into practice. You didn't know this before. So the like magic secret sauce, according to Melody um, Betty, who wrote Codependent No More, is called detachment. So that's also a weird word. Don't, don't pre-apply any definitions to it. I want to read to you what she has to say about detachment, because the truth is codependency ruins lives. <laughs> Um, and and I'm not, it's not to say that you might not be attached to somebody who is making absolutely terrible, destructive, harmful decisions that are affecting you and affecting your home and affecting your relationship. So it's, it's, it, this is real. It's real. I think that our instincts to overcompensate are, they come from a place where we're suffering um, or we just want the best for somebody, right? We just don't want them to continue this harmful stuff. But the, the bad news about that is it doesn't work. That's the bad news, and I'm sorry to tell you. You're not responsible for other people. You are not in control of other people. It is not helpful for any of us to absorb the shock of somebody else's consequences or choices. It's, it's, a, it's an awful system, and I don't like it, and I don't prefer it. And what I wish is that I could honestly control everybody. I, I, am tr I should be in control of everybody in my life. I know what's best, but it doesn't work. So this is what Melody says about detachment. Detachment is not a cold, hostile withdrawal, a resigned, despairing acceptance of anything life and people throw our way, a robotical walk through life, oblivious to and totally unaffected by people and problems, a Pollyanna-like ignorant bliss. Ideally, detachment is releasing, or detaching from, if you will, a person or problem in love. We mentally, emotionally, and sometimes physically disengage ourselves from unhealthy and frequently painful entanglement with another person's life and responsibilities and from problems we cannot solve. Detachment is based on the premise that each person is responsible for himself, that we can't solve problems that aren't ours to solve, and that worrying doesn't help. We allow people to be who they are. We give them the freedom to be responsible and to grow, and we give ourselves that same freedom. We live our own lives to the best of our ability and strive to ascertain what it is we can change and what we cannot change. And then we stop trying to change things we can't. Ugh. I'm going to read just a little bit more. Detaching does not mean we don't care, because that's, that's the narrative that I would tell myself. It means we learn to love, care, and be involved without going crazy. We stop creating all this chaos in our minds and environments when we are not anxiously and compulsively thrashing about, oh my gosh, we become able to make good decisions about how to love people and how to solve our problems, right? Okay, well, one last paragraph. I, this is the problem. I don't know where to stop reading to you because I want to read you the whole book, like story time. One last paragraph. And this might be helpful. Like, tune in here if this, is like, if this book is reading your mail. When should we detach? When we can't stop thinking, talking about, or worrying about someone or something. When our emotions are churning and boiling. When we feel like we have to do something about someone because we can't stand it another minute. <clears throat> when we're hanging on by a thread and it feels like that single thread is frayed and when we believe we can no longer live with the problem we've been trying to live with, it's time to detach. You will learn to recognize when detachment is advisable. A good rule of thumb is this. You need to detach most when it seems the least likely or possible thing to do. Well, I have some of this going on in my life right now, and I am trying to sort out what detachment 
in love looks like. Because here's the truth. We can't control the people that we're married to or partnered with. We can't control our kids. And the truth is, sometimes our kids are going to make terrible decisions with consequences. And they're theirs to make. They get to be where they are. They get to be where they are. Now, this is not like an abdication of parenting or relational connection or communication. But it's something deeper than that. It's this unhooking from the sense that it is our job to fix what's wrong, to fix what's broken, or to fix somebody else's behavior. It's terrible. What a terrible thing to ask of us. Um, I'm not good at this, but this that one phrase where she's like, when should you um, detach when you're just thrashing about all the time? I've been doing some thrashing. I'm thrashing. I'm thrashing about. And um, if the thrashing was helpful, I would recommend it. If thrashing gave us the results we were after, I would absolutely, I would, I would write an e-course on how to thrash about wildly. But the problem is it doesn't work. It's not producing any outcomes that I want it to. And so this idea of letting our people be where they are, letting them see the world how they see it, letting them choose what they're choosing, letting them sit with the results of whatever that is, that is codependent no more. Terrible. Oh my gosh. But the truth is, codependency does not get solved just because a problematic person exits your life. Like, just be, it's not theirs. Codependency is mine. And it, wherever I go, there I am, right? So if this is not something I learn and start to work on, I will walk it right into my next space. I will walk it right into my next relationship. I will over. I will overreach with my kids forever. Um, and so this is mine to work out, nobody else's. It's nobody else's fault. Blah, sorry. Okay. Finally, a whole bunch of you signed up to be in my test kitchen. So fun. The cookbook is due May 3rd. So I am in the final stages of cooking and cooking and cooking and cooking and cooking and cooking. So a bunch of you signed up to test some of my recipes. Thank you. Those are coming in hot this week um, with all the details of when we need them back, your comments, your suggestions, um, you know, your experience of that recipe and how it went for you. But anyway, if you're interested in cookbook updates in general, I put a link in the thing. I put a link in the thing. You can just sign up and anytime we have something new coming up like, hey, here's our two possible cover photos. Which one do you like? That's where it's going to go is to that sort of advanced notification crew. Uh, <clears throat> that's actually who we use to pull our test kitchen recipe testers th from that list of people who had said, me, I want to know things. Uh, we went to that list and said, anybody of you want to be in test kitchen? And they were like, yes, that's why we're here. Um, okay, it's so fun. It's my favorite project. Oh, it's my favorite project. I cannot wait, cannot wait for this. Oh, I have so many fun things to tell you that we're working through and brainstorming around food and gathering and this house and you and people. Oh, it's just all, it's everything I love in the whole world. Okay, that's it. I think I went longer than I wanted to go. Sorry about that. So happy Monday to you. Um, I hope that you are able to also sit outside in a beautiful spring day in shorts. Um, it's time. This is it. This is why we live here. In April, we start losing the will to live next month and it doesn't come back till October. So if anybody wants me to come live in their house in the north or in the mountains for roughly three months out of the summer months, like all of them, let me know. I do come with a lot of kids. It's kind of a heavy lift. Like, it's, it's a lot. I'm just going to say it's a lot. But I am a good cook. And so I'm just put that on your list. All right. That's it. I hope my um, fancy, oh, do you like my Ted Lasso shirt? You know how I feel. How do you like my, um, also, my new microphone? That's the kind of pro I am. I was going to put on makeup for you this morning, but then I just couldn't. Okay? I just couldn't do it. Okay, everybody. Happy Monday.